delighted to be here um, and I'm delighted everyone came back after lunch as well so that's always a bonus um, <coughs> you know we've had successful workshop so far and um, you know a lot of good talks this morning and I'll do my very best to not bring that to a stuttering halt um, with this effort um, as Karen said I'm from I'm from the University of Stirling um, up in Scotland so right on the doorstep of the University of Stirling which is Scotland's University of Sporting Excellence we've got Sport Scotland central office for the, the Scottish Institute of Sport and the Institute of Sport has this remit if you like this, this mission statement which is to deliver cutting-edge technology and innovation in order to provide specialist services to meet the needs of individual sports and athletes so you can see hopefully how TMG potentially contributes towards that particular remit and just to give you a little bit of background about the Institute here's just a brief overview of some of the athletes um, that are currently supported or have been supported in recent years and you can see a wide range of sports you can imagine the, the unique demands on all these athletes across different sports. Very, very different uh, set of skills required, very, very different series of support networks that are required as well. And the Institute was founded in 1998 and since then it's helped support 18 world champions, 36 Olympic and Paralympic gold medalists, 12 European gold medalists and 69 Commonwealth Games medalists. So a fairly high success rate and a fairly high standard of athletes. So how does TMG fit into that? This is a, a little competition of who's the palest, by the way, going on here. TMG, we've already had a, a, a really nice summary of what the measurements are. Just to remind you, displacement, contraction time, they're probably the two most important, the two most stable, and the two most valuable measurements. I'm just going to draw your attention to another measurement that started to creep into the literature, into the research literature more recently, and that's a measurement of velocity. Now effectively, velocity is just a function of contraction time and displacement. So it's the change in displacement over time. So it's, it's a rate measurement as much as anything else. And some of the research is quite nice. This uh, group uh, fronted by uh, Irineur Leturco down in Brazil do a lot of work with footballers, and they've shown that following high power, high strength, high speed uh, training periods, training cycles, you get this quite pronounced change in the velocity measurement. In fact, I've highlighted that with a box. I don't even need to point there. I've got this pronounced change in the velocity measurement, actually more marked than some of the other measurements like contraction time and displacement. So there is potentially value here. There's still a little bit of debate about the best way to calculate this velocity measurement. So some groups have looked at velocity over certain periods, breaking down the contraction into segments, if you like, so the first 10%, the 90% mark. One group that's, <coughs> that's done some work with this showed quite a nice correlation here between a decrease in MVC and strength that was associated with fatigue following high intensity exercise and the same sort of change in the velocity 10 measurement, so the initial onset velocity measurement. So there's some association there between what we're seeing in, in functional testing and what we're getting from this velocity measurement. But most of the literature actually relates to some of the more traditional parameters, if you like. And we've already seen some of this work from uh, Sergey earlier, but you know, this, this for me is one of the seminal papers from Bostjan Simunich's group. And it really followed on from a number of studies prior to this, but they showed quite clearly that there was this, this very, very strong prediction between contraction time and percent of, in this case, myosin heavy chain one, but effectively fibre type composition. So you get this nice non-invasive assessment of muscle fibre type composition. So what does that do for an elite athlete population, for an, uh, an institute of sport? Well, it allows us to make good recovery decisions. It allows us to make good training decisions. We know what our athletes are capable of because we know what kind of muscle they've got without having to go in invasively remove chunks of muscle using muscle biopsies. In addition to that, we can get our muscle profiles done. So again, you've seen this kind of image already this morning, and we know that our blue, red, purple symbols are telling us whether we need to do more activation, more stretch, more strength-based <coughs> training. Again, this allows for what I've referred to as targeted interventions. And effectively, what this is all about is getting away from a one-size-fits-all approach. One size just doesn't fit all. We know that. We know that one size 
what works for one athlete does not necessarily work for another athlete. And yet, because of time constraints, because of difficulties in individualizing everybody's training, there will generally be a blanket training regime that's, that's uh, put over a squad on the whole. This allows us to focus that training in a way that might be more relevant to <coughs> a particular individual. We can also use our TMG to assess our, our lateral symmetry. And apologies, these figures aren't particularly clear in this light. But again, you've already seen this kind of work already. How does symmetry come into our elite athlete population? Well, there's a fair amount of data to indicate that symmetry could be, risk, could be linked to injury risk. In terms of movement balance, we could be talking about gait patterns. This could have effect not just for injury and function, but actually for skill performance. Okay, from a biomechanical point of view, a kinetic point of view. As well as our lateral symmetry, we've also got our functional symmetry. So we could be looking antagonist-agonist ratios. We could be looking at the muscles within a synergist group and how those all coordinate with one another. Again, this could be linked to injury. could also be linked to more efficient movement patterns. If we're trying to prevent injury, we're not always going to be able to. Sometimes we need to assess our rehabilitation process. So we can track this. Sergey again described this really nicely earlier, how TNG can be used to monitor that return to play action and monitor the, the, the effectiveness of a rehabilitation program. We've shown from our lab, just uh, published last year, TNG can also track fatigue quite nicely. So being able to know when an athlete's fatigued, more importantly, potentially, when an athlete is recovered and when they should be returning to training, when they should be moving on to the next phase of their training, can be really, really important information for us going forward. So these are kind of the big, broad questions, I suppose, that we can answer with TMG. But before we do any of that, the first stage has to be to get our athlete profile. And again, you can always spot the Scott in the swimming pool quite easily. So how do we go about getting our athlete profile? Well, identify key muscles. In swimming, we're really interested in the whole body. So we get a snapshot of muscles from all across different regions of the body, mainly the prime movers. We collect these measurements and we build up our picture. So I've just shown a few here. And of course, by getting left and right, we also get this idea of symmetry. And we can see that balance in, uh, in, in our individual. Now, Different sports, different questions, different muscles are maybe going to be involved. I also do work with the Scottish hockey team. Of course, for hockey, there's not really any upper body element to it. We're really interested in everything from lower back, erector spinae, and southwards. So potentially a more concentrated area of muscle profiling is going on there. <coughs> 